Welcome back to the Immigration Answer Show. My name is Jim Hacking. I'm an immigration lawyer and I'll be here for a while. Whether it's a full hour or not, we'll just have to wait and see. I hope you all are doing well. Hope you're all having a good weekend. I've been here working today, trying to organize my thoughts, organize some things. Um, get the, Oh, hello. Uh, mm, nah, ah, now it's just getting worse. Uh, Chris and Altenos watching from Tampa and Timotope is watching as usual. So thank you both for being here for the comments. Everyone who's watching, let us know where you're watching from, what's going on. It's a beautiful day here in St. Louis. And I thought about doing another show tomorrow, but I need to take a little break. So tomorrow uh, I'll be chilling. Um, so this will be our last show of the week. And our next show will be Monday at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Rocio's here uh, in Ohio. Tyrone is here, Darlie in Wichita, Ashanafi is in Maryland, Saring is in New York, Atachuku, New Jersey, and Yashika is here. So hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I shot some videos today. I did one on uh, what happens if you get a green card through marriage and then you get divorced and before becoming a citizen, marry another person and try to sponsor them for a green card. So that is always an interesting situation. I also did a video based on one of the callers yesterday. I also made a TikTok about it, which is um, about what happens when you uh, apply for advanced parole and how you are applying for a marriage base or for any kind of green card. If you leave before you have advanced parole, that can really put you at risk of having your application denied. So, um, that's a real problem if you leave before the advanced parole is issued. In the old days, you could leave and then deal with it later. Um, you could have someone in the United States send it to you, but that is no longer the case. That doesn't work anymore. They seem to have much more information about people's comings and goings than they used to. So Zion's in Belize, Yannick's here. Um, Saring said I did pretty good, so haha. <laughs> That's a nice name, Searing Sherpa. Uh, all right. So um, the waiting room is open. Oh, I got to put the link to the waiting room. That usually helps. I was wondering why no one was hopping in. So here is the link. What do you guys have going on this weekend? Let me know something fun. I'm going to go see a play tonight with Amani. We're going to go out to dinner for a date night. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to go see the St. Louis football team, STL City, take on LA Galaxy. So that'll be fun. Uh, that's a noon start game for us, which is unusual. Most MLS games are on Saturday nights. So since we had the night off, I thought we'd go out on a date tonight and then go see soccer tomorrow. And then I'll probably just sit around by the pool, although they said it's supposed to rain. So um, I'd love to know what you guys are up to. I'd love to see anything fun you've got cooking um, that you're going to do tonight or tomorrow. Um, yeah, so... So let's go. Phil's here. Let's see what Phil has to say. Hello, Phil. Hey, Jim. How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, just a quick question. I was on your show the last time yeah, regarding my N400 application, and uh, I told you about it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm calling from Seattle anyway. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we went, and uh, I thought maybe they would skip my application of... Uh, um, they remove our condition, but they didn't. So they were like, oh, they can't skip it. They have to deal with that first before they will come to the N four hundred. So the lady asked us to for sure. They uh, for sure they 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 never were going to skip it. That was never going to happen. Right. Yeah. So she asked for additional document, which I sent, and I haven't heard from them still. But luckily, I think two weeks ago they sent a new uh, interview date for the N four hundred, which is coming pretty soon next week. So I just want to take your advice. I want your advice, like, if I go, I don't want what happened last time to happen again. I just want to kill it once and for all. So uh, what are you going to advise me? I, I, I mean, regarding that. I mean, as I always say, you got to be ready for anything. They, they might want to talk about the marriage. They might want to talk about the 751. They, they'll do the whole test and everything. What do you mean, kill it? I, I don't know exactly what you mean. You just got to go through the whole process. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean... Like I said, um, the previous meeting, uh, she asked us, um, she's, 
separated us um, uh, for the meeting. And um, uh, she asked a normal question, our room color, our door well, color. That's not, that, that's not normal for a 751. That's unusual. I wonder why they did that. Yep. I don't know myself. I have no idea. What country are you from? From Ghana. What was your immigration status before you got married? Uh, so I came with a B1, B2. Yeah. And uh, I went back home again, and I came for the second time, and I met my wife. I mean, we knew each other back from Ghana before, and we met here again, and we got married. Yeah, we got engaged in 2018, uh, February 2nd, in Seattle. Did you have a hard time getting the original green card? Did that take a while? Uh, the two years came normal, even though the lady, uh, I mean, the interview date, we didn't find it easy. It was a little bit tough. Yeah. The lady asked me so many questions, and uh, yeah, we passed through. And uh, so they don't, they don't believe your marriage. I, I you think so? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long has your seven fifty one been pending? Uh so right after twenty eighteen, the two years expired, and so uh, probably yeah. like two and a half years now, three years now. Yep, they're waiting for the marriage to fall apart. They might come visit you at your house. Okay, so then why did they send a new N400 um, um, interview date? No idea. Okay. Could be automatic. Oh, okay. And, 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 and yeah, we sent in the additional document and they didn't get back to us regarding that. Yeah, that's weird. Um, which field office is this? Oh, Seattle. Seattle, Seattle yeah. yes. Yeah. All right, well, good luck. Let us know how it goes. No worries. I'll call your office when that happens. In case I need a lawyer, then you help me with that. Okay. Thanks, Phil. You're welcome. Enjoy your weekends. Bye, buddy. You too. All right. Allie's back. Hello, Allie. Hey, Jim. What's up? How you doing? How are you today? I'm Great. good. Thank you for asking. Okay, good. All right. I, I wanted to ask you a question yesterday that I forgot, right? Quickly. Sure. Um. So my nephew... Um, he's an asylum, right? He fell for asylum, um, I think in March. And he recently found out he has a court date on Monday. Um, he doesn't have a lawyer or anything. Um, when he shows up. Court date or interview? It's a court date. It's not so, an interview. So when did he. How it's did a he, hearing. How did your nephew enter the United States? Um, he crossed the border. Okay. All right. So that makes sense. So he has a court date. Where's the court date and where does he live? It's, it's in Atlanta. Atlanta? Uh-huh. Oh, that's the worst. They have like a 2% approval rate for asylum. Oh, crap. So one, I mean, he probably needs to move. But so this is his first court date? Yes. How does he know how does he know that he has a court date? Did he get a notice to appear in the mail or what happened? Um, he said that he saw something on on TikTok and he went and did it, looked it up online and he saw where there, the, it, he saw it online. I don't know what website he saw it on, but he went online and saw it. All right. So I'm going to give you a, a phone number to call 1-800-898-7180. Mm -hmm. Eight nine eight seven one eight zero. He can put in his alien number, and it may or may not tell you what that is. But... Yeah. Um, can you go again? One eight hundred. What'd you say? Can you give me about the number, please? One eight hundred. Uh huh. Eight nine eight. Uh huh. Seven one eight zero. Seven one eight zero. But if okay. he, he knows from online or from that phone that he has a court date on Monday, if he just court appearance, then okay. he, um, he, should, he should go there on Monday and tell them, hey, I just happened to I just happened to check online and see that I had this court date. I didn't really know about it. Um, mm -hmm. They're, they're going to ask him for an up. They're going to ask him to fill out a form to update his address. And, and then he needs to say, I need more time to hire an attorney. And then they'll give him more time to hire an attorney. Okay. Okay. All right. has, I mean, tell him he's got to be there an hour early. Tell him don't mess around. If he misses it, he's going to get ordered deported uh, without being there. Okay. All right. I will. All right, Jim. Thank you again. Bye, Ali. See ya. Okay. Bye. Yashika's next. Hello, Yashika. 
Hi, sir. How are you today? Great. How are you doing? Doing good. Thank you. So uh, I have a question for you. Uh, can you please advise me? Actually, here I am on F1 status and uh, now it will be in August one year for me. I entered the United States in 12 August 2022. Okay. Yeah, so I need to get guidance regarding my H-1B, how can I get into that? And my actually aim is to be here and want to settle my family here. So I well, want to call long, my you're, family. You're a long yeah. way from doing anything with your family. You're a long way from that. Like if I can call my family here on tourist visa. Not gonna happen. No. Nope. I mean, they can apply for a tourist visa, but it'll most likely get denied. Like for international students, take, uh, they uh, don't give a tourist visa to their parents? They might. It has nothing to do with whether or not there's an international student here. It's whether or not they can convince the embassy that they're going to go back home. What's the home country? India. Yeah, so they might. I would say don't get your hopes up. Okay. When are you going to graduate on your F1? So I'll be getting graduate in uh, 2024. Are you getting a master's? Yeah, I'm doing my master's of kinesiology, like physical therapy. Yep. So is that a STEM field, do you know? No, not a STEM field, but I need to get my license to work as a physical therapist. So you'll get one year of OPT when you're done with school, and then you'll need to find a sponsor, a, an employer to sponsor you for an H-1B. Yes. So I'll tell you, there's a website that you should check out. It's called myvisajobs.com, myvisajobs.com. And you can put in your occupation and maybe even where you want to work. And you can see all the companies in that area that sponsor someone for kinesiology. Um, if they do, I don't know if they do or not. So you can, you can check that and then you got to start applying for jobs and you're going to need to tell people that you need sponsorship. Okay, so then I can uh, get my H-1B. Maybe. I mean, this year there were 700,000 people that there were 700,000 applications for 65,000 slots or 85,000 slots. So, so, you know, that's a one in seven chance, a one in eight chance. So there's no guarantee you're going to get an H-1B. More, in fact, it's more likely than not you won't get an H-1B. Okay, so what if I'll not get, get the H-1B? So I can uh, then again uh, get into like uh, further extend my visa to study and do my PhD here? Well, you don't have to extend your visa. Your visa is your visa's valid as long as you're in school or OPT. So you would just get a new I-20. When you get admitted into the United States on an F-1, you're given what's called duration of status. So if your visa expires, that's one thing. If you leave the United States, you need to get a new one. But if not, you can stay here, yeah, all through your PhD. Yeah, my visa is for five years. Yeah, so it's not about the visa. It's just about school. Yeah, so you, if you did not get selected in the lottery, you would have to go back to, go back to school or leave the United States. Okay, and I need to call my, uh, like my brother also here on F1 status. So is the, is the interviews are open now and the process is going on? I don't know. You got, I mean, you would know better than me. You just went through it. Um, yeah. The uh, the first thing he he's got to find a school that's going to give him an I twenty, and then he's got to apply for a DS one sixty. Okay, and uh, like uh, you told me about my family, I can't call them. Like uh, what I I have some idea. Like uh, if I have graduation uh, ceremony, so my parents I can invite them from my school side. From, for my graduation ceremony. Yeah, but they might not let. They might not give them visas. Okay. There's no there's no right to a there's no right to a visit visa. You can try. You should try, and that seems like a good reason to me. But they're not very nice over there, and you know the embassy's backlog. So you'll just have to wait and see. Okay. And do you deal with visitor visas? Nope. No. No, because they're mostly denied, and then people just get mad at me. Okay. It's not much for me to do. Okay. I got you. Thank and, you. Good luck. Uh, I, 
I have one more question. Sorry. Uh, uh, actually, I got uh, uh, um, like engaged with my one of my fiance here. He's been here for six to seven years. So he's on asylum. So I need to know he's having his uh, last hearing now. But uh, like before, how long we need to marry so that we can he can apply for me after that for my papers. But you're assuming he's going to get asylum. What if he doesn't get asylum? Yeah, there is no surety. He's on work permit right now. Which is, means he's on nothing. He's, yeah. an, he's an asylum seeker. If he's, if he's in trial, that means, there's, that means he's probably going to lose and get deported. I mean, most, most asylum cases in court go against the immigrants. So I don't think you can plan much right now. Okay. Okay, I got you. Thank you so much. Bye, Ishika. See ya. You have a good day, sir. You too. Nishi's here. Hello, Nishi. You're on mute. Yeah. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Um, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for accepting me. I've been all. I always wanted to come on your show. Sure. Um. So the thing is, I just got approved by UCIS on I-130 um status but my son back home um it's been like maybe like three one almost 13 14 months something like that going to going on 15 and all i see is um your status is taking longer than in usual and um they told me like if when i go to check it out they said like if i i shouldn't contact them until any time after like November. Is so, this normal? So you you came to the United States and married somebody? Mm -hmm, not, yeah, I came here um, on on work visa. And then and then and, you married a U.S. citizen or a green card holder? Yes, um, U.S. citizen. And and that U.S. citizen filed an I one thirty for you, which you said just got approved. Yes. Did you also file for a forty five for yourself, or just the I one thirty? Yes, I got the um the forty five two and the seven six five the work permit. Yeah, I got everything. Only thing I didn't got was like the I one thirty one, the one that allows right. you to go. But yes, yes, yes. So, so has everything been approved or just the I one thirty? No, everything has been approved. Actually, I got my card already. Um, Wait, how long ago was that all approved? Um, like maybe like two months ago. So somebody asked me the other day, and and then you and then you have a you have a son back home, and so your mm -hmm. spouse filed a separate I one thirty for that kid. Yes. And that's the one that you're saying is taking fourteen months. Yes. So somebody asked me the other day if I think that in those scenarios they wait to do the kid's case until the mom's case is over, and I do. So. No. Yeah. I was thinking that, but I was like. It's longer than usual. And the thing is, I don't even know which field office I'm at. You mean for him? Yeah. Um, you're probably at a service center. You're probably not at a field office at all for him because he's overseas, right? Yeah, he's back home. Mm -hmm. for that. I mean, 14 months is a long time for that. So I would say if another couple of months go by, you might need to sue them on the I-130. Um, yeah, but they said that um, I'm not to reach out until any time after November. You don't listen to them. They don't. They don't. They're not in charge of that. We we do what we want. They do what they want. We don't have to. We don't have to sit on our ass till November because they told you to. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, sounds good. So, when do you think I can like actually think about suing them? I'd say maybe, um, maybe like five, four or five months after your I one thirty was approved, you know, or yeah. eighteen months after you filed the kids. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Bye, right. Nishi. See ya. Bye. Take care. Thank you, Jim. Bye bye. You too. Oh, nice to meet you. Yannick's here. Hello, Yannick. Hey, James. How you doing? Oh, Jim. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, um, I was calling you to get some answers because I'm a Siley and I got married. So I was wondering if I could still file the I 130. How did you enter? You're to, to the border. So you can file the I-130, and then um, did you only have one entry, or did you have multiple entries? 
Well, I live from, um, I got a stamp from Panama and a stamp in my book from Mexico. Yeah, that, but as far as entering the United States, you only came in one time? Yes, one time. So, um, and and you're, you have a pending asylum case? Yes, that's correct. And have have you had, do you have a court date or anything coming up? What's the deal? Yes, um, I've got a court date. I've got two hearings already. But you, I get married, so I moved from New York to Rhode Island, where my wife is live in Rhode Island. So I'm yeah. currently living with her now. So they give me a next court date. I move the court from New York to Massachusetts, Boston. And when's the court date? The court date is next year. Next year, yeah. April. So the first thing you have to do is file the I-130 and get that approved. You got to prove that it's a real marriage. Now, your marriage is going to be tested at a higher standard because you're in removal. So they they just think that anybody that got married after they're in removal, in deportation, that, that it's fake, right? So you've got to prove more than a regular person does. Do, do you understand? Yes. And then once that's approved... Then you're going to have to um, start the overseas process and then file for a waiver. You're going to need a waiver. And you're probably going to, once the I-130 is approved, you're probably going to want to ask, you're going to need a lawyer. You're going to ask the court to terminate the deportation proceedings so that you can proceed with your waiver with the National Visa Center with the hopes of going overseas to get a visa stamp. But your problem is you've told them you can't go back to your home country. So you're going to have to figure out a way to go somewhere else to get your visa interview. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, what's the currently evidence I need to submit with the I-130? Yeah. So um, you can download all that for free. I'll put the, I'll put the, uh, the link, but if you go to hackinglawpractice.com forward slash marital evidence, you can download our list of what we tell all of our clients to gather. Here it is right here. You can go to that. Web. You can watch it later on the video too. Um, yeah. Or you can take you can take a screenshot, but hackinglawpractice.com forward slash marital dash evidence, and that's yes. that's, that's our best list of what we um, ask our clients to prepare in support of their application. Okay, yeah, but I know I just got certain evidence. I got like um, she put me on her life insurance. She put me up on her insurance. You know, I am the lease and. We joined a bank account together, you know, and we got pictures. So that's the current evidence I have now. Yeah, but so two things to keep in mind. One is you're going to need more than everybody else because you're in removal. So they think your marriage is fake. That's number one thing you need to remember. The other thing is later on, you're going to have to show hardship to her if you get deported. If you have to go back to your home country, you're going to have to show hardship to her. Otherwise, they're not going to give you the visa. Okay, okay, okay. So... So I'm saying the evidence that I have now, can I still like, send it with the I-130? And maybe when they're going to interview, I need to carry some more evidence. You probably won't have an interview, so you've got to give them everything you got. But yeah, you need to keep gathering evidence. It sounds, it, to me, Yannick, right now, it sounds sort of thin what you have. I, I would want to see a long history of how you know each other, a long detailed statement from you, a long detailed statement from her, lots of photographs, trips together, all that stuff, because they're going to think it's fake. Okay, okay. So we need to take trips together and all those things. But we've got like the zoo, we've got movies together. Well, okay. And let me say this about pictures. So a client gave me the other day a big stack of pictures, but they were all just selfies of the two of them. Those aren't very good. The pictures that the officers always ask about are the pictures of when there are other people in the pictures. Those are the most important. Oh, like friends or family? Yeah. Mm hmm. Because then they'll say, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Yeah, but in, um, the next thing, Jim, um, our son, uh, she got about four sons, but they're currently in the army. So they don't really live at Rhode Island with her now. Mm -hmm. You know, so she don't really got no family here. Well, wait a minute. So she has kids old enough to be in the army. It sounds like there might be an age gap between you two. Yeah, she's she's 50 and I'm 30. So, so they're going to hold that, that they're going to hold that against you for sure. They're going to think you're paying her to get you a green card. Oh, so this is, a, this is a tough case. What country are you from? I'm from Jamaica. 
Yeah, so an asylum case from Jamaica, they're going to be suspicious of. A marriage when you're in deportation, they're going to be suspicious of. A 20-year age gap where you're probably closer in age to her sons than to her. They're going to, they're going to, um, this is, this is a tough case. Oh, so I, I definitely have to get a, a lawyer to help me with it, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a tough case. I think it's maybe winnable, but I, I would say even if we did our best job ever, I think your chances of success are like 30%, 30 or 40%. They're, they're going to come at this one hard with that 20-year age gap. Is the, okay. lady that, the lady that you're marrying, is she Jamaican? No, she's an American citizen. Yeah, yeah, I know. But is she like from Jamaica? Is she a Jamaican descent? No, no, she never been to Jamaica. All right, well, let us know if you need help, Yannick. Yes, okay. And I will sure will call you. Thank you. Okay. Bye, buddy. All, All right. right, our friend Antonio's back. What do you say, Antonio? Hey, Jim, how you doing, buddy? Great, man. How you doing? Oh, I got a quick one, man. Okay. So life, life has happened uh, with me trying to do two households, take care of two households, one here, one in Jamaica. Um, is USCIS going to look at my case uh, bad because I filed bankruptcy? Uh, no, I don't think so. That hardly ever comes up. I can't think of a situation where it comes up. The big question is, um, the big questions are always back child support nope. or... Um, who, you know, the affidavit of a support, how's your cash flow? If your cash flow is okay, bankruptcy usually doesn't come up, but I got, um, a, I got a new job. Bank, um, cash flow is going to be fine. I mean, as far as your adjusted gross income on the last three years, you're okay. But it's over a hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you'll be fine. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, bro. Okay. Bye Antonio. Cool. See you, man. Bye. Zion train is here. What's up Zion train. Yes, how you doing, Jim? I'm great. Nice speaking to you. Um, I'm a U.S. citizen. I filed for my wife in 2007 when we got married. And the I 130 came through. I did a fiance visa. All that came through. We moved to the States. And after a couple of years, we had some family issues. We moved back to the country in Belize. And we've been here since 2010. And uh, what I filed, I actually filed for her and my stepdaughter also. Now I'm refiling again because it's been a long time that this has been done with. So I just refiled the I-130 for my wife of 15 years and my stepdaughter. I raised her from she was three and a half years old. Um, How old is she now? She's um, 19. I When I put the form in, she was 19 years old, yeah. So I know she got two years, but... Cutting it pretty close, Brother Zion. Yeah, well, you know, life sometimes you change well, your mind certain things. But listen, I, I, every client from Belize I've ever had, I've loved very, very chill. So I get it. <laughs> so okay, so what's the question? I got you. So you're so. When was the last time that you yourself lived in the United States? Um, I lived in the United States. The last time is 2012, but I traveled back and forth. The last time I traveled was 2018. How about taxes? Have you filed taxes? For not for the last two years. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to have to do it. But I filed. Yeah. yeah. What's the status of the I-130s? Well, it's just, it just went in about a month ago. Okay. I'm, so with, that's you. I'm with you. What's the question? The question is, I, I, I mean, I see this thing where they talk about I have to prove that I, um, what's the word, dominance? Uh, domicile. Domicile. Yeah. I mean, I still have my driver's license legal from... Um, over there. Um, I still have a bank account there. Uh, so I'm thinking about the domicile issue. I, I am going to have someone do, um, probably do affidavit and support with, along with me because I just don't want to take a chance. Um, I'm a little concerned. I've done this in a long time. You know? I mean, what do you think? What it sounds like? Well, and so, and then, and, then, and then the other thing, the other wrinkle that you have is the prior application. They're going to be confused. Like they're going to be what the hell happened to Zion? We had we had a case of him from 15 years ago, and now he's back. So yeah. lots of little things. But for domicile, so I have probably three or four videos on domicile. This is something I talk about fairly regularly. It's not it's not um, a huge issue. Um, here's what I would say: that those I-130s are probably going to be pending for about a year, right? 
Okay. And so sometime in the next year or right around the time that USAS approves the case, I need you by yourself to come to the United States. And I need you to set up shop wherever your plan is to live when you come. So what city do you think that's going to be? I'm, I'm, I'm going to Houston. Houston. Okay, perfect. We'll pick Houston. So what address? So for the I-130, did you list an address for yourself for you, Zion, in the United States? Or did you list an address in Belize? I, lived, I list an address in Belize where I currently live. And I also you list an address in the States where I plan to be okay. in Houston. Yeah. Is that like a family member or something? Yes. Okay. So then I'm glad you still have your driver's license. What I would do, you just need to freshen that shit up because you I'll have tra- to transfer my driver's license from New York to Houston. So I was planning on doing that probably this summer. Yeah. So a, a nice trip from Zion, two weeks tops in the United States, seeing friends, you know, figuring out what you're going to do with a 19 year old, maybe taking pictures of where you're going to live, maybe getting a library card and just sort of reestablishing Zion in the United States in Houston, Houston, Houston. Yeah. You know, even like, uh, whatever the big grocery store chain is, get one of those, get a library card, get maybe maybe a, um, a utility bill or something at that address or something where you can get your name added to something just so that you, when they ask, which would be after you get approved for the I-130s and after you start processing it, that's when domicile will come up. And, and obviously you want to use that address too for all of your forms that you file with the State Department. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, what I, that's what I plan to do. Yeah, okay. you want to make it so that the, the, this ship is headed from Belize to Houston, right? right. That's where, and so you just want you just want that feeling of momentum, right? To get. And I will always say that the the citizens shouldn't go to the interviews, but since I'm living here in Belize, I might have to go, right? Well, first of all, they won't let you in, most likely, unless they gotcha. want, unless they want to. Okay. Um, second of all, they probably won't know that you're there because you've been there for so long. Um, so. Uh, the only way they would find out is if your spouse told them and I would tell your spouse not to bring that up unless asked. Right. But, yeah. and I, I would also say it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you weren't in Belize, but you know, I'm not worried about it. You guys have been together for a long time. Oh, well, we have all the pictures, the graduations. Uh, I mean, I think you're fine. Daughter, she's, she's in her, she's going to her last year to get her um, bachelor's. Yeah. And, you know, I think you're okay. good. It's just going to be a little bit of work on the back end. And, you know, the sooner you, you said, if you come up this summer, clear up your driver's license and do everything else, I think you're good. Okay. And if I, I was thinking about start doing some um, online work, if possible, in Houston, that's what I'm going to look for also. Yeah, that's so fine. But the, the other thing I meant to say is you need to get your tax returns on file because even if you have a co-sponsor, which you probably need one, you still... They still use this as a way to make sure that you paid your taxes, even right. if it's zero. Okay. Okay. And one other question for a friend of mine. Yeah. Her, she's married um, with a child, and her father, U.S. citizen, filed for her. Um, that's a long time, right? Yeah, it's like 16, 17 years right now. That long? Mm-hmm. And if she's in the States, what is, that? is that an issue? Yeah, she's out of status. Um, not yet, but well, she can't stay here. I just did a video on this. Um, it just dropped yesterday, but it's about brothers and sisters. But it's the same thing. She can't stay the whole time, waiting for that to become current because she's not an immediate relative. So she'd be out of status. I mean, who the hell knows what's going to happen with immigration sixteen years from now? Right. But it's, it's, if if she had been staying here the last sixteen years, she couldn't get a green card. Okay. Because she's out of status. Okay, so there might there might be an issue. Not not no not might be an issue. It is an, it issue. an issue. She needs to leave when her visa's up. Okay, and, and wait. The thing that dad filed does her no good now until the visa becomes current because there's so many people in line ahead of her. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jim. Bye, Zion. See you, buddy. Ciao. Ciao. Mills here. What do you say, Mel? Hey, Jim. Salam alaikum. How are you? Welcome, salam. Good. How are you doing? So far, so good. Um, I have good news. Yeah. Uh, so when me and my wife hired your firm back in April, um, yeah. which was a month and a half, uh, I we got everything. Uh, like the case 485 has been moving drastically. It was like the like biometrics immediately after like a, a week. 
uh, then medical but, uh, and all that stuff. So medical, I submitted the 31st of May. I mean, actually, the 1st of June. And as yeah. you know, what immigrants, we always update our cases to see if anything oh, yes. is updated. Oh, yes, I know. Yep. And uh, so yesterday, I messaged uh, the paralegal, Aleska, which she's really helpful. She's uh, awesome. Yeah, she is. And I was like, hey, which I'm going to ask you this question right now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, we, me and my wife have a company. Uh, I mean, I actually do, but I never did any work for the company. It's just an LLC. Never started doing anything. And I asked her, is that... It, can that be any reason to do an expedited request for a working permit? So as soon as I sent her that, literally 45 minutes later, I got a notification. My working permit has been approved. Nice. Which is a really good thing. So, but let's go back to the question, to the same question. Can that be used as a reason to expedite a working permit? No. no. Everybody and his brothers in some version of, everybody and his brother needs their work card yesterday. So just saying you need it a little bit more than others, that's not a reason to get. Yeah, to get you're, uh, yeah you're absolutely just It was just kind of like funny that I <laughs> yeah. it. Well, and I did a follow up email like, I'm sorry, I already got it. You yeah, know the lawsuit ladies think that they monitor our emails. I don't think that. But um, yeah. yeah, that's funny. I'm glad. That's great. Yeah. And also, uh, the as I see a lot of people like are also Munir from one of the chats because I've been yeah. watching like all the shows past 100 shows and i'm on the every time on the show looking everything learning and stuff me and my wife so he said like he got also a medical rf and like a couple days later i he got the green card actually but here's the thing when as soon as i sent my medical on 2nd of june that day was the working permit was approved because i saw the notice on the on the website itself the, the travel document not but the working permit it is do you think, I know it's a common question, do you think this what me, might be one of those type of cases? Because working permit in a month and a half, that's... Yeah, I think your green card's going to come pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I was thinking that. So, But anyways, thank you so much. I'll keep you updated. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out for Laleska. I'll tell her that you gave definitely, her good words. Definitely. She deserves it. See you, buddy. Bye-bye. All right, all right. We always like to have happy clients on here. Beats the alternative for sure. Uh, let's say hi to Emmanuel. He's been waiting. Emmanuel. Yeah, uh, good. Uh, hi, Jim. How you doing? Yeah, I'm uh, call, I'm here, uh, watching from Ghana, Accra. Nice. Yeah, Jim, I had a, a little question, just one question here. You know, as my wife is a U.S. citizen, we've been married for uh, since 2018. She filed I-130 2019, and we got approved during the COVID time. So after I had my interview in 2022, that was last year. But when I went to the interview, everything went well. The consular kept my passport. She kept, uh, I mean, gave me 221G form. She didn't ask for anything. But I mean, at the last state of the interview, the problem was here. Yeah, you know, the police had made a mistake some years back had my fingerprint on in their database. So when I went for my criminal background check, uh, the police head of his asked me what happened. And I told them that, yeah, somebody said I owe him money and then reported that at the police station and they invited me. I went there and submit every evidence that I have that I don't hold that person. So they took my fingerprint. They asked me to go home. It's about 17 years, 18 years now. I didn't hear anything from the police. So it was now that I was about to do my medicals, I'm sorry, my uh, criminal background check, they found out that my fingerprint was on it. So the police had to go back to the local police station to find out what happened. And they wrote a letter to the, uh, the police head office that I don't have any issues. So they issued me with the, uh, the criminal bag uh, report. So when I went to the interview, I believe they had, the bag, I mean, uh, the consular had the database. So she found out. So after the interview, she gave me the two two one year. Said, "Okay, did I should go." Did she, she did she ask you about that? Yeah, she asked me. I mean, what happened? Because there was nothing on it. There was nothing on the system that shows that I've done anything. Even the police were so confused. They don't even know what happened. They don't know where that thing happened. So I have to tell them. So they went to the local police station to find out, and that was where they had. To give them the local police station give them letter that no i don't have they don't have any issue with me i'm not on the assistant 
so they can go ahead and give me the uh i mean the approval so they gave me which the consular officer kept that with my passport and that was it it's been a year now i'm still waiting and i'm not they keep sending me i send mails I and they're trying to, to tell me i think you need to sue them oh okay your case your case is one of those ones we're not sure what we want to do we probably should just approve it but he's got this criminal thing i'm not sure if i believe him i'm not sure what's real so i'm, I'm not going to do anything so i think i think your spouse and you need to file a lawsuit against the State Department. Otherwise, I think you're just going to keep waiting. Yeah, I mean, my spouse is so frustrated. I mean, she's kind of like, yeah, I mean, she doesn't know what to do again. So you know? our, law our lawsuits, when there's been an actual interview, when our lawsuits have worked pretty well. So where does your spouse live? In uh, Maryland, Baltimore. Perfect. Yep. I would sue uh, that, that office, uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Maryland is great. I would, I would sue them. I bet things get moving you know, in a month or two. Right. So, uh, uh, if I'm recently, they sent me, uh, I mean, an email say I should wait for 20 working days. If I don't hear anything from them, I should send another mail again. Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'm just waiting. I think next week will be, uh, exactly 20 working days. So I just want to send a follow up email to see whatever I mean, they're going to say. No problem. And then if it doesn't work out and you need us, just email us and say, hey, my name is Emmanuel. I was on the show with Jim on Saturday and then we'll go from there. All right. OK, so uh, let me say let, let, let me ask this question. Final question. Sure. How much is it going to cost me if I have to hire you for the lawsuit? Yeah. So it's the filing fee is four hundred and two dollars and our fee is forty eight hundred. So it's five thousand two hundred and two. And if you if you pay up front, you say five hundred dollars. So it'd be forty seven oh two. All right. Okay. No problem, Jim. Uh, I mean, yeah, let, let me do the follow up email. And then once I mean, I get the response, I'll get back to you and let you know what happened. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 I have a good friend who's an immigration lawyer from Ghana, and I think she's over there right now visiting. So that's pretty exciting. Let's say hi to Zaid. Hi, Zaid. How are you, Jim? So I'm good, man. How you doing? Pretty good. So basically, I have two cases on file currently. Okay. And uh, the I-130. What was the first one? I-129. It's, uh, what's it called? Fiance visa. So basically, on the I-129, it says basically, uh, are you married? Basically, it does give you an option basically to do it if you're married. Correct? You mean a K-3? A K-3, yeah. Yeah, okay. Those are, those are a waste of time, but go ahead. And basically, I have I-130. The I-129F, I, I I, uh, basically, they received it on October 5th. Okay. I-130, they received it on October 10th. I did it Which, you, you filed them in the same packet? In the same packet. Okay. But I don't know. This The receipt date says October, mm -hmm. October 5th, not October 10th. So basically, um, the October... I'm sorry. The uh, I-130... They already sent me an RFE for a marriage. Basically, we sent in everything, but they wanted the marriage certificates instead of the marriage contract. Basically, my my uh, wife is from Jordan. Mm -hmm. So basically, I feel like every couple months, it just keeps on going back. I don't know. October's not that far back. And if you didn't send in the marriage certificate, that's sort of a basic thing that they always ask for. So I wouldn't blame them for that. That I would blame that on you no uh no the basically like how long it'll take basically for the uh, what it's called. basically for for the approval the approval basically it said it said 10.5 months now it's 50. yeah i would say somewhere around a year and um basically i have another basically a uh, question for another case, okay. Basically, of bringing my uh, aunt's kid. How are you gonna do that? That's not gonna happen. There's no way to do that. You can't sponsor your cousin. Huh? Okay. You can't sponsor your cousin. So, is there a way to basically for my father to sp sponsor his uh, sister? Yeah. Then their kid over 
Yeah, but that's a 16 year wait for if your dad files for your sister for his sister, the wait right now is 16 or 17 years. It's not 17 months is it? The I-130 might be, but the visa is there there are 17 years worth of people in line ahead of her. Oh, okay, okay. And how long does an RFE generally take? Well, when, when I hear about an RFE, my question is always, how long did it take you to respond and then maybe double that time before they put it back on track? Oh. Two weeks? <laughs> Two days? So, I mean, it just knocks it off track, so it just slows things down. But you, you're, I wouldn't even start worrying about this till October. Oh, okay. Thanks, Aid. See you, buddy. All right, all right. Hey, everybody. Our friend Art is here. I didn't see if the Angels won last night, Art. I hope for your sake that they did. All right, all right. Our friend Joshua is next. Hello, Joshua. Can you hear me? Uh, hi, Jim. Uh, hi, hi, Theo. Thank you so much for yeah. Uh, thank you so much for all you're doing. Believe it or not, uh, you're living a great legacy behind. Thank you so much. Thank so, you. Uh, so very quick, uh, yeah, so very quick, um, myself and my wife, we did a K-1, uh, K-1 filing on uh, the night of May 2022. Uh, we, uh, we got, uh, fast forward, we got an RFE uh, on the 2nd of June, uh, 2023 now for additional evidence. Okay. And uh, the thing um, is, after religiously... Joshua, you you're married. What do you say? You're you're. Are you legally married? Ah uh, yes, we we got married. Yeah, Utah County, the Utah County. Yeah. You got married online. Utah County, uh, County. Yeah, that that, that would have been yeah, correct. And did you file a correct. fiance case or a spouse case? Before we got married, we filed a fiance case. And then after you got married, what did you do? So we were preparing to file uh, a spousal case. Then an RFE came in for the um, for the K one. The, yeah, the, the day you got married, that K one is over. Oh, okay, okay. So what do you think? Do you think we should still proceed with it? No, you can't. It's you're you're not a fiance anymore. Correct. Correct. But Correct. so the, you're doing this all wrong. Why are you doing things this way? This is not how you're supposed to do things. I'm listening, Jim. I'm listening. Yeah. So you're you're going you're going to confuse them. Most people don't file a fiance case and then get married online and then think about filing an I-130, like you've got to sort of pick your plan and stick to it. You can't change your plan halfway through. I mean, if you have to, you have to. Um, the question is too now with this Utah marriage, you have to prove that it's been consummated. Has your wife come to see you since, since the online marriage? Uh, no, it's going to constitute extreme hardship. No, so, loser. No, uh-uh. No, we're not doing that. Or for no. health reasons for her? Nope. Not going to work. So Waste she can't, time. Uh, yeah. Not going to work. Not doing that. You're going to wait. You're going to wait two more years for that, and then they're going to say no. Then what are you going to do? I got, got a letter from uh, the doctors. Nope. The doctors. I don't care. I don't care. It, it, I think the chances of it working are one out of a hundred. Do you want to wait two years of your life on a one in a hundred chance? No, no, I don't want to. So I don't want to stop doing all this stuff. Get legally okay. married or have her come see you. I mean, I don't even like the Utah marriage. What country are you in, Joshua? Uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, Joshua, have you ever applied for a visa to the United States? Joshua? No, sir. Never. 
Have you ever been married before? No, sir. No. No, sir. Never. No. Okay. Um, no, I haven't. I would say, Joshua, there's no embassy. No. Nada. Okay. Zero. Zero. There's, there's no one, there's no embassy that I know of where they treat men more harshly and meanly fairly than men from Nigeria. So if you keep going with this approach of, we're just gonna, if you keep going with this approach of, we're just going to file a bunch of shit and see what happens. That's not, that's, you're not doing it right. You're giving them reasons to wonder about your marriage. They're already suspicious of men from Nigeria in online marriages to women from Utah who, or women in the United States who get married in Utah and then say, I can't come see my husband. I think we lost Joshua. The reception wasn't so good, so I think we lost him. Flavio is here. Hello, Flavio. Hello. What's up, Jim? Can you hear me? I got you. How you doing? Doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So uh, I think I, I was on the show a couple weeks ago, okay. and I was still to file the just been upset it that's been done since then. And I already got my uh, biometrics equipment done as well. Great. However, they did request a request for evidence regarding my sponsor, which is my wife's aunt. Okay. I believe that the issue must have been, like I said, I took too long to take care of all this stuff. So I was talking to her and I got all the documents uh, middle of 2022 or so. And I, I must have not gotten her latest tech returns for 2022 yeah i think that was it so i'm trying to just to ascertain what they said here and the request yeah. i should you know they just there's, kind of... not, there, there's nothing worse than rfes on affidavit of support shit because there's really only one sentence in the whole page about what it is that they want and they layer it up with like six pages of junk that make it almost impossible. So let me just cut to the chase, Flavio. Yeah. You need to redo the affidavit of support for the co-sponsor. Move up, move up the year for 2022 taxes. Just do it all over again, and then make sure that you send all three tax returns and all documentation that supports the income claimed. In other words, if she works for somebody else, all of her W-2s. If she's self-employed, you know you're going to need something from her accountant to show where her income comes from. But basically, you need to redo the form, get the tax returns for the last three years. So that'd be 22, 21, and 20. And then you need to get documentation to show how she ends up with whatever number she puts in line 21 for adjusted gross income. She is retired in that case. What would it be? It's always adjusted gross income. Wherever the source of her income is, you've got to prove it up. So if she's living off social security and shit like that, then she's probably not a good co-sponsor. No. She yeah. had a pretty good job for Boeing for a number of years. So yeah. So you, so you just need to talk, you have to have a talk with her and say, look, I need to prove up that number in the adjusted gross income. How can you help me do that? Okay. So I'm pretty sure what I had was to just tax returns. And I'm not sure if I had, I, I might've had her W2 from, from Boeing from, wait, she's not, there anymore so that that couldn't have been what i used right no i'm not sure what i used to prove the income but i did have the returns i did not have the one for 2022 because it wasn't time yet and then i didn't update that yeah and you might just because um you guys are sort of up against it with this rfe um you might get the tax transcripts that just shows she paid her taxes too that's not a big deal she can get those online okay so it could be the tax returns for 22 21 or 20 or the and no and we're, we're overkill we're, okay. Our backs up against it because we have the RFE. If we if we screw up this RFE, then they could dismiss the case, which they probably won't. But we don't want them to. Right. So we want to we want to go the other extreme and give them everything, and stack that shit on top of each other. So it's transcripts plus tax returns for 2021, 2022, and 2020. Yep, and then proof of income. And do you know exactly what it would be in a neck? Like I said, the since he's retired or. No, the great thing is the great thing because I own my own law firm. I don't have to do affidavits of support anymore. It's literally the best thing about owning a law firm is that other people do that. I don't know. I just know that 
whatever she, she I mean, it, it should be pretty apparent from the tax return or from the CPA. I mean, usually you would attach it to the back uh, of the copy of where, you know, you have to line up. You don't just pull that number out of your ass. You've got to give them documentation. So she should know it or have it somewhere. That's not a big deal. She's going to have some. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's basically all that would, that I would need to respond to the RFE, right? The redo form, all those transfers and returns, and then the proof. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to do with this. As you know, it's not ideal to get one. And I'm sure, I think it's important to everyone to see this is what it looks like a bunch yeah, yeah. of right. stuff. Yeah. That's just copy paste. And I don't know. That's well, I just told you what it is. So I think I have a video on this, which oh, is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm saying based on this, I did not, yeah. I didn't know. Exactly. No, I think they have a, I think I have a video on it. Like, I think they just put a bunch of regulations, then the law, yeah. then, then one little line about what you need, and then a bunch more regulations. That's exactly it. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, USCIS. Yeah. I guess that's all I need. I'll grab it from that. I should be, should be good to go. Good um, luck, Fabio. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, buddy. Bye. All right. All right. Don's here, or is it Dan? Hi, Dan. Dan. How are you doing, Jim? I'm Thank great. you for this opportunity. So yeah. I'm going to be quick. Uh, I have a file of lawsuit with you guys. It's about yeah. to go out, I think, in a couple of days, maybe next week. Great. So I had a question um, that I couldn't uh, ask them because, you know, they're such a busy and I don't want to call them every day, yeah. every day and then do that. So I had a uh, RFP for that affidavit of support, mm -hmm. you know, uh, back in April and we responded like same day mm -hmm. and they received it. Mm -hmm. um, it said that the wife was uh, missing a signature. Okay. And then uh, the social security number was wrong. So we, I mean, we, I mean, we went through the whole thing and then we did it and then just filed back. So I was thinking like, is it going to affect on that uh, lawsuit? No. Mm -hmm. And what's then, the, what what kind of a case is it? It's a marriage based green card. And what's the filing date? What's the receipt date? Receipt date on the uh, RFE. No. When did you first file? When did you? Oh, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Original one was filed back in twenty twenty two May. And then uh, we did a refile in December of yeah. last year uh, yeah. because of the uh, the removal was uh, dismissed terminated right. and I guess we made yeah and then uh so they, the last yeah the christina and her team is working on it so they yeah. are they said it takes i mean in a couple of days they will send it out yeah so i was worrying about that if it's gonna you know uh, make it no, mess or I mean, something like that dude, dude you got it back to them in 24 hours what the heck you couldn't have done any better so no that's that's not gonna they're not gonna they're not gonna raise that as a defense to the lawsuit so it's not gonna and then our uh, last question is uh I had a uh, combo card. Yeah. Uh, is while this is going on, can I travel? Uh, what was your status before you filed for the green card? Uh, I was a asylee. Um, I would say sit tight because it's just going to be a couple months. If you can, just wait because you're almost there. Okay. Got it. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks, buddy. We'll see you. All, right. mm -hmm. All right, everybody, that'll do it for today's show. I'll be back on Monday, 530 Central. I'll be on the road. I'm going to Nashville, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. I'll be at the airport doing the show. I'm going down there so that we can file lawsuits in the middle district of Tennessee. I haven't been admitted yet to that court. This will be like court number 30 that I'm admitted to, but we file those lawsuits all around the country because besides me, we have a bunch of friends who sponsor and help us get those lawsuits on file, like my friend Stephen Lefkoff in uh, Atlanta and Roya in Massachusetts and I mean, I'm in Virginia, sorry. So we have friends all over that help us file when I can't get admitted outright. I hope you all have a great weekend. I'll be back on Monday. Uh, have fun, stay safe, and be kind to each other. Later. <laughs>